Okay, in this plate we begin with Wicca, which is modern witchcraft. You see the symbols here, the Triketra and the pentagram. Down here, the two crescent moons and the sun or star. So mote it be, one of the sayings in uh, Wicca witchcraft. You can pause the plate here if you want to read this entire section, but founded by Gerald Gardner, who was a Freemason. And then you can see on the uh, influence it's had on children, uh, i.e. the Harry Potter series, hugely successful, and teen genre. Um, also, teen paranormal romance or, uh, has been a huge genre in bookstores. Moving along here, the rituals, uh, initiations, and you see the use of the pointed dagger or the sword. This is similar in Freemasonry. And I'll, uh, you can pause the screen here to read the similarities between contemporary Wicca, Wicca and Freemasonry in the rituals that they do. So mote it be, they also use that in Freemasonry as well as witchcraft. And the precise similarities between uh, the two groups uh, are that both groups uh, cause candidates to strip off secular clothing, cause the candidate to be divested of all metal. They hoodwink or blindfold the candidate ceremonially tie ropes around him uh, through the form of the tie uh, though the form of the tying varies so in uh, Freemasonry it's a noose and so you have different uh, uh, you have similarities between both uh, rituals Gerald Gardner uh, influenced L. Ron Hubbard all influenced by Aleister Crowley uh, and now we move right into Scientology, Aleister Crowley here, Jack Parsons, L. Ron Hubbard. The, Hubbard, there was a movie recently done with these uh, between the relationship between L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons. Ended up uh, in the movie that they were basically homosexual. And so uh, Scientology is black magic and sex magic uh, at the base core of this cult. And here's Tom Cruise, a product of Scientology. You can see what that produces. Here's John Travolta, and he was recently in a tabloid uh, being exposed with, I believe, another man. And then here is Beyonce. She's a Scientologist. And now Penthouse Interview, Scientology, and all, uh, and all other cults are one-dimensional, and we live in a three-dimensional world. Cults are as dangerous as drugs. They commit the highest crime, the rape of the soul. They are telling you what they do exactly and so sex and rockets the occult world of jack parsons and so you can read about jack parsons and his involvement in the occult you see the eye of lucifer here strange angel and his development and uh, part founding of the jet propulsion laboratories uh, in the movie they do uh, show his concoction of different fuels which they actually com consumed as alcohol and uh, so there was a um, uh, admiration by uh, L. Ron Hubbard for Jack Parsons ability to uh, chemically uh, make these uh, alcoholic beverages which they drank which were very very potent uh, and so you can see why he was involved with jet propulsion so moving on to uh, Golden Dawn esoteric order the Golden Dawn you can see the similar similarities between Freemasonry and this uh, esoteric order and you have uh, the triangle you have the Sun on the inside now the use of the cross you always have this Sun around the cross whenever you see a circle or an emblem around that uh, in behind there is the Sun and it is not a Christian symbol in that case uh, like the Celtic cross is a, an example uh, you can see now checkerboards the reverence for Egypt all of that similar in Freemasonry. This is, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, Sai Dao, which is a, a cult in Vietnam. And you can see the use of the Eye of Lucifer and the radiating uh, illuminated rays behind there. Look at the use of the uh, checkerboard. Uh, look at the use of the different colors of the elements there. This cult believes all just like ascended masters I showed you prior Jesus and Confucius and Buddha all of them are ascended masters and they all help you attain enlightenment so it is a perversion a what the Bible calls fornication spiritual fornication of all paths leading to the same uh, location so now looking on at uh, the uh, uniform or dress and here are both priests and you can see uh, that priests 
You know, my question here is who is the priest, who is the student, and who is the Freemason? Uh, they all look similar because they're all the same dress. They're ministerial garbs. This is the Freemason. Here are two Freemasons, but this happens to be a degree that is being handed to uh, George, uh, I'm sorry, Bill Clinton by George W. Bush Sr., so this is now an educational thing. But they are secret society members, so they wear the same thing if they're doing a ritual. Here is the judge. Oh, I forgot to say uh, uh, the judge on this side. And then moving on uh, to the priest. Uh, by the way, the the gavel um, of the uh, judges is a Freemasonic invention. And now here are the students. Now, interesting thing with the students are they do wear the mortar board. Students, students are the only ones that wear this mortar board. That mortar board is a reference to Freemasonry or Masonry again. Now Masons use this square board, they put mortar on it and they fill in uh, and create uh, the walls. We are their mortar and we wear the mortar board for them. and We are ministers for them. And so you can see here the uh, Bricklayer uh, College graduation has it right. This is an insult to us. We're the only ones that wear it. They put it on us. They don't put it on themselves. So there's the tassel, which is a ministerial tassel as well, the mortar board, and what you get when you graduate, you get your degree. That is another reference to secret societies and the degree orders. And so you can see an example here, the uh, fez and the tassel being worn by this uh, fez. The tassels of the Catholic Church, and these are cardinals' tassels, so these are priests, priestly or ministerial tassels, and you see here the mortar boards uh, being worn by all the students. You are their minister as you graduate, and you get indoctrinated into uh, evolution, uh, any other philosophical mode that pulls you away from from uh, Christianity as well. Now moving on, uh, as regards masonry, Babel, of course, represented a Masonic enterprise. When they reached an abiding place in the land of Shinar, it is affirmed that they dwelt therein. It was here that they built their high tower of confusion. Out of evil comes good, however, and the confusion of tongues gave rise to the ancient practice of Mason, Masons conversing without the use of speech. So a clear uh, understanding of why symbolism is used uh, because of the language, uh, the confounding of the languages. And now in the Masonic quiz book, the question is asked, who was Nimrod? The answer is one of the founders of Masonry. Nimrod was a Mason himself, Nimrod being the king of Babylon, original Babylon, and the grandson of Noah. And so they can understand this fully on the, uh, the Freemasons understand this fully and regard uh, all of their brethren as Masons going all the way back to Nimrod.